Programming the Arduino I.O. I'm your host, Lewis Laughlin. We will be looking at the um, various inputs and outputs on the Arduino. Here we are concerned only with the outputs. The other videos will cover input, analog to digital conversion, and pulse width modulation. Basic rundown again of the Arduino has 14K of uh, program storage, 1K of static RAM for user variables, 512 bytes of EEPROM, and our main look here is going to be the 14 digital I.O. pins. This is a 16 megahertz RISC processor that's reduced instruction set computer. Here is just a basic uh, electrical connection and pinout of the Arduino controller. Starting over here, you'll notice that we have RXTX. This is a connection to the serial port on your computer that we discussed in introduction to Arduino. Uh, while they are digital I.O. pins, I generally reserve them for the serial interface. The rest, that leaves us in reality 12 digital I.O. pins. You can see there are along 2 through 4 is here, 5 through 8, 9 through 13. Uh, there's also 6 analog to digital channels up here on this section of the chip, which is a 28 pin dip. That will be for a later video. This is the electrical schematic uh, that I will be using at all in the entire series of videos. Uh, again, we have a 16 megahertz crystal. Here's our reset switch, and this is our reset pull-up resistor. We have a 10K pot connected to analog zero. We won't be using it in this video. We have two push button normally open switches connected to digital pins 7 and 8. We really won't be using them here either. They're for the next video. Here we have two light emitting diodes connected to digital pins 9 and 10. Those we will be using here to understand how to set up digital pins for output. A quick look at light emitting diodes. Like all, di like all diodes, a light emitting diode will conduct current in only one direction. Uh, in the case of DC, it's from negative to positive. So using electron flow, the current flow will be against the arrow. The arrow points to the negative semiconductor material. Remember, all diodes are simply a junction of P-type material and N-type material. In the center of this drawing, the LED is connected to ground. The cathode, that is where the arrow points, is the negative side of the circuit, which is also the flat side on the case on many LED case styles. We have a 470 ohm resistor in series with the LED to limit the current. The reason we do this is an LED will operate from 1.6 to about 3.4 volts depending on the color and construction. Uh, the digital I.O. pins in the Arduino puts out 5 volts. This would damage the diode or the output pin itself if we didn't limit the current. So the resistor limits our current flow protecting the LED and the electrical pin on the Arduino chip. This of course is called a source configuration. When the electrical pin on the Arduino is switched on it supplies 5 volts of power to light up the LED. Now this is a different configuration on our right Again, you notice that the LED anode, that is the, the wave, not the arrow side, goes directly to 5 volts, goes through a 470 ohm resistor, there's your cathode or negative side, 
then it connects to the electrical pin on the Arduino chip. When you, with appropriate programming, the pin inside the Arduino will be switched to ground, completing the circuit. So when we have a low output on the pin, it produces what we call sync. It provides a sync or path to ground for the current. What I've done in this illustration is I have reduced the complex switching, which is just a group of transistors or MOSFETs, but ultimately all digital circuits are switches. And I've reduced them to a handful of simple switches. When we program a particular digital I.O. pin, we're just turning on switches to do different functions. When the Arduino or any other microcontroller really is first powered up, there are all the switches are generally open. The if you put a voltmeter from the pin to ground, it will read nothing. It, it's just like it's not there. It's just a little piece of metal hanging electrically in the air. And it won't do anything until we write a program to switch on the appropriate switches to determine whether it's going to be an input or an output. Generally, Arduino programs in your um, programming software on your PC really has three sections. Um, you should have a comment section as illustrated up here. You have a setup section. This sets up the electrical state or properties of your I.O. pin and then and it operates only once. When you power it up it operates one time to set up everything for you and never operates again until you hit reset or turn the power off and cut it back on. Your program that you want constantly running is down here in the loop command. It's the uh, program between these curly braces. All right, initially, we're in our setup. Um, we're up in our setup section. Here's our curly braces. We're going to use a command in Arduino called pin mode. In this case, whatever the LED pin is, it could be any of the uh, 12 or 14 pins on the Arduino. In this case, I have specified that it's an output. Okay, what does that mean? If you look up here in the switch drawings, with it being an output, that alone turn, closes switch 2 in my illustration. The second command, digital write, LED pin low, means now that I have taken switch 1 and switched it to ground. What does that do for us? Okay, I have the LED resistor configuration connected in the sync configuration. Current will flow from ground through switch 1, through switch 2, through the 470 ohm resistor, the LED, back to the 5 volts. Remember, electron flow flows from negative to positive. Nonetheless, at this point, my LED should be on. Okay, here is a different setup. Again, here is my setup section of my program. Pin mode LED output. Of course, I want it to be an output again, so I've closed switch 2. But now what have I done? Digital write LED pin high. I have switched SW1 up to 5 volts. So what do we have here? Uh, we have a current path through the LED 470 ohm resistor, switch 2 and switch 1 to high. This is in our source configuration. That is, if you put a voltmeter here on the electrical pin, you're going to read 5 volts. By the way, on the previous uh, slide back here where the pin is low it will read zero volts but now that I have 
this set to high, it's going to read 5 volts and thus my LED lights up. All right, back at our main schematic, this is how we um, connected our LEDs, if I was going to use both of them. For the following little demo program, I'm going to be using, I believe, LED1 or two, doesn't matter. I'm just going to use one of them. Here is a sample program if you happen to use your Arduino IDE on your PC. Um, let's look uh, at this. There's a command up here called define LED9. Uh, what that simply means, and that's that little line there is the cursor. I took a screenshot of this. It's just the cursor where I was typing. Anywhere in the program that I use LED1, the program will automatically know it's digital pin 9 on the chip. Okay, here is our pin mode LED1 output. I programmed it, of course, to be an output digital right LED pin 1 low. That is, I turned the LED off. The LED, again, remember, is connected in the uh, source configuration where if I have 5 volts out, the LED will light up. But if it's low in this case, I have 0 volts. Let's drop down here to the loop program. This will cycle continuously. In the loop program, my first command is digital write LED1 high. That is LED1, which is connected back to pin 9. Digital pin 9 will cut on. Alright. Um, then I have a command called delay. Delay is in milliseconds, so 1000 milliseconds is one second. Um, then after that it will do a digital write LED1 low. It will turn it off. Unfortunately this will be so fast uh, that you really to see it turn off you will need to put another delay 1000 down here below this and it will be on one second and off one second and we'll just blink and all I'm doing is just switching a few switches in that IO pin. Of course we could do um, we could connect let's note something on these IO pins they don't deliver a lot of power they're sort of low power they deliver point 02 amps or 20 milliamps max. That doesn't mean that you can have 20 milliamps flowing through 12 pins at one time. Don't get that idea. Much uh, what it comes down to is we have to boost the power handling capability of the uh, Arduino pin. We will use a switching transistor. Uh, this 1K resistor here limits the current through the transistor, in this case a TIP120. The TIP120, if I put this on the previous loop with two delays where it's on one second and off one second, this relay will turn on and off with the signal. This diode here is to protect the uh, transistor um, if you remember your relay theory, it's an electromagnetic coil, builds up a magnetic field around it when powered up. When the power is cut off, the field collapses and produces a reverse voltage spike. The diode here absorbs that spike instead of um, shooting it back through the system. Here is another transistor if you want to. It could be the previous circuit. I could switch a, light, a larger 24 volt light bulb off and on. Here's a current limiting resistor for my transistor again. Just an example. Okay, 
This ends part one. I would invite you to go to part two where we will look at input. Um, thanks for listening to the video and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.